Gaming Bolt presents 15 most anticlimactic boss fights. Bosses come and bosses go. Some leave a lasting impact on your soul, pushing you to become better or reach an emotional head in your journey. Others don't quite push you to those limits, and rather than going out with a bang, they disappear with a whimper. Let's take a look at 15 of the most anticlimactic boss battles in video games. Evelyn, Resident Evil 7. Of all the bullshit you deal with in Resident Evil 7, the revelation that it's all the fault of Grandma Baker, aka Evelyn, is quite something, if a bit expected. With Evelyn built up as this big menace of sorts, manipulating all of the family and Mia, destroying Zoe without breaking a sweat, the final battle is pretty... meh. Fire a bunch of bullets into her, land outside, fire some more, grab a gun, fire some more, and that's really it. Really, this entire sequence is just waiting for the necrotoxin to take effect. Wow. Hoyt, Far Cry 3. Jason Bourne, or uh, Brody, is finally face to face with the man responsible for Rook's Island's troubles. Sure, it was Voss who killed his brother, but Hoyt was pulling all of the strings. So Jason infiltrates Hoyt's stronghold, foolishly assuming that the latter wouldn't recognize him and then engages in a QTE knife fight. Yeah, that's right, this climactic battle is little more than a series of Simon Says button presses. At least it wasn't the ending. Admiral Havelock, Dishonored. Admiral Havelock is an interesting case. He was effectively a manipulator, pushing Corvo to eliminate Lord Regent, and then trying to use Emily as a puppet ruler while he assumed control. In other words, he was no better than the people he had killed. Oh, and he also tried to kill Corvo. The end boss fight is little more than a confrontation and a rescue attempt before Havelock falls to his death. Sure, it was gruesome, but far from satisfying. Killer Croc, Batman Arkham Asylum. Suicide Squad notwithstanding, Killer Croc is one of the more feared villains in Arkham Asylum. He's friggin' eating dudes for crying out loud. However, his lair is little more than a jumping puzzle with the occasional battering to Croc's face. He emerges again for another fight before being disposed of. William Robert Irons, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Frank Underwood, because we refuse to call him by any other name, has taken control of the United States with his badass military. He's fairly crazy, but smart, threatening to launch a bioweapon to eradicate the masses. So obviously, this should be a cool encounter. Nope. He messes with your suit a bit before running off, you then tackle him and sever your prosthetic arm to send him falling into the abyss. General Scales, Star Fox Adventures. You'd think one of the biggest threats on Dinosaur Planet would put up more of a fight. And yes, General Scales was simply being manipulated by Andros. But what the heck is this fight? Take one swing at Scales and the fight is immediately over. Don't swing at him and he just stands around, awkwardly waiting for you to move like the weirdest rendition of I knew you were in trouble when you walked in. Didact, Halo 4. Spare a thought for Didact, a powerful forerunner Promethean who's seen wars with the Flood and faced exile. He's the big bad of Halo 4, but was stopped by Cortana, and yes, while she was still an AI, and a pulse grenade from Master Chief. Well, thanks for coming, pal. At least the Warden Eternal isn't a total wash in Halo 5. Paul Serene, Quantum Break. We're not quite sure what we expected from Paul Serene, the man behind Monarch. He's not an exceptionally bad guy despite doing some really bad things. That's kind of the annoying thing though. At certain junctions you control Serene and he's a fairly well developed threat. Yet by the time primary protagonist Jack Joyce reaches him, Serene is simply disposed of like nothing. Lame. Lucan, The Order, 1886. Lucan, the Knight Commander of the Order, is a Lycan. Shock of shocks. The Lord Chancellor is also aware of Lucan's true nature and adopted him after killing his whole tribe. Shockest of shocks. Then Galahad just shoots Lucan and it's over. What? The Order 1886 wasn't exactly renowned for anything exceptional, except its visuals, and on the final battle is just another full stop on why. Mr. Sinister, Deadpool. The Deadpool video game is pretty underwhelming in a number of respects, not the least of which includes the final battle with Mr. Sinister. Sinister is one of the baddest mutants around with shape-shifting, telekinesis, and tons of smarts. 
He even beat the X-Men before confronting Deadpool. After defeating his marauders and clones, you kill Sinister by simply crushing him with a sentinel foot. Gary, Bully Considering all of the interesting fights you get into in Bully, one would expect Gary the sociopath to have something up his sleeve. Ironically enough, he's just like many of the real bullies encountered while growing up. All talk and no stamina. Or in this case, resistance to excessive punching. Even Gary Oak puts up a better fight and he doesn't even physically fight. Mehrunes Dagon, The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion Mehrunes Dagon is the big bad of The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. He's a Daedric prince representing revolution, destruction, and energy. By the end, you're going to war with the Daedra, but it's Martin who merges with Akatosh and sacrificing his own life that defeats Mehrunes. That's right, you, the grand hero of Oblivion, does absolutely nothing to save Tamriel. How's that champion status feel now? Damien Brinks, Watch Dogs. Damien is a major pain in Watch Dogs, and even if there's no proper boss battle with him, you could have at least had the pleasure of killing him slowly. But no, you take out Jordy, who's kind of betrayed you, but who really cares, to be honest, while shooting Damien in the head. Older RPGs had the tendency of throwing their most powerful boss at you, followed by an easier version of said boss. Grandia 2 did this, and so did Final Fantasy VII. Battling Sephiroth after the infinitely tougher Bizarro Sephiroth is basically a matter of using hero drinks and an Omni Slash. Yes, one Omni Slash. Granted, it depends on your level, but he's nowhere near as tough as his previous incarnation. Don't even get us started on the Sephiroth that appears in Cloud's mind afterwards. Nashandra, Dark Souls 2. Nashandra seems tough at first. Her scythe can do quite a bit of damage, and her curses drain you quickly if you're not careful. But she's actually fairly easy, even if you don't do the ranged cheese, since many of her attacks can be avoided and she kind of just stands there. The hilarious thing? She is the final boss of Dark Souls 2, and she's nowhere near the toughest, let alone compared to Gwyn from Dark Souls 1 or Soul of Cinder in Dark Souls 3. And that'll be about it for this one. If you guys like what we're doing at Gaming Vault, please consider subscribing to our channel, and I'll see you guys on the next video.